Hey everybody, welcome back to Road and Reel. This is your uh, Kern River Fishing Report. So uh, this is basically gonna start here in Bakersfield and we're gonna work our way all the way up to about the Johnsondale Bridge. Uh, before I get started, I just wanna give a shout out to Walter who uh, I met yesterday and uh, he stopped me, he said he was a fan of my videos and uh, he likes watching my trout videos and he looks forward to the next fishing report. So I thought that was pretty cool. So good luck, Walter. I don't, I don't know if you went fishing uh, yesterday or uh, if you're gonna hit it up this week, but I really hope you catch something. Uh, conditions are looking great. So let's just go ahead and get into it. I've got five pages of notes. So I'm gonna try to save you some time and throw some, uh, you know, some chapters down below. Uh, no sense in listening to me ramble. As you can tell, this intro is already long enough, right? Let's just start. We're gonna start off with uh, the Lower Kern River and we're just gonna work our way up. So the Lower Kern River, um, water outlet coming out of uh, Isabella is about 3,500 CFS. Um, I don't wanna say that's not fishable, uh, but it is going to you know, open up some new spots. You could probably get out there, um, drop some, uh, some cut baits or some, uh, some dip baits or something, uh, maybe even some uh, red worms or some you know, night crawlers or something like that. Who knows what you're gonna catch? You're probably gonna catch a catfish. You might catch uh, some carp, some pike minnows. Uh, you might even get some smallies down there. Uh, it is opening up. Again, though, 3,500 CFS is fast. Don't get in the water. So that takes care of the Lower Kern River. Um, now, when we get to Lake Isabella, let me fix my shirt here. This mic wants to pull everything down. Um, but when we get to uh, Isabella, right? So looking at Isabella, it's about 97% capacity. I know there was a worry there for a little while that about the middle of July, we were going to uh, you know, max out and go over the spillway. I don't see that happening anymore. We're at 97%. I think we're gonna be holding at 97% um, in, in flow into the lake. As of right now, it's probably about 2,500, 3,000 CFS, uh, and they're letting out 3,500 CFS. So, Right, that's, that's like a, a dead wash pretty much. So the lake might hang in there for a little while, um, but it's not gonna go over the spillway. So enough about that. Uh, talking about the fishing there, right? So let's just start off with bass. That's, that's my favorite thing to target in the lake. Um, South Fork, North Fork, uh, the rocky formations around the shoreline, there's a lot of drop-offs now that we have access to. And so these bass, which you have to remember, it's hot, right? It was 103 yesterday when I was up. Uh, up at the lake. And uh, those bass are gonna be hanging out in the cooler water. Um, so look for some sort of structure, look for some drop-offs. Uh, that thermocline, uh, if you're not familiar with a thermocline, it's basically where the warm water and the cold water meet. And fish kind of like to hang out in that section. And so the bass are gonna be holding out about 15 feet. If you're gonna go out there and you're gonna target them, um, I would suggest that 15 feet all the way up to surface level. Um, whopper ploppers are my favorite early in the morning or in the evening. My next go-to is like a lipless, um, like a rapala or like a, like a shad wrap, right? You know, something that rattles, um, but it's not gonna dive too deep. Trout imitations are also working very well. You have to remember these guys have been feeding on all those trout uh, ever since, right, the spawn, everything has been going on uh, in the springtime, and they've been feeding on, on all those trout that have been washed down that river. So trout imitations are working out very well. The next go-to for me is like a drop shot with a wacky rig. Um, I really like Senkos and Robo Worms, uh, about five inch, six inch. I like the skinnier ones, so Robo Worms for me are usually my go-to, and I usually go to a bold bluegill, the watermelon and the pumpkin colors. Uh, in that as well. So that pretty much covers the bass. Uh, all right, catfish. This is my second favorite fish to target there at Lake Isabella during this time of the year. Uh, Camp Nine is always my go-to. I've known people, you know, catching some pretty decent catfish down by the dam. Uh, I've never had that luck or that success, if you want to call it that. Uh, but Camp Nine, uh, dip baits, cut baits, night crawlers uh, is pretty much your go-to. Um, I don't know if you made it out there or if you've seen any of my past fishing reports, but right there at Camp Nine, there's a really deep channel where that river flows. And so these larger fish, they hang out in those deeper channels. Catfish, believe it or not, are like ambush predators. And so they're looking for, you know, a lot of those opportunities and they're also scavengers. So everything sinks to the bottom and that's usually where they're hanging out. The next fish, uh, I usually target this earlier in the summertime, uh, but crappie, right? So crappie, 
Uh, I hear crappie fishing is getting better. Um, again, structure, South Fork is usually my go-to there, but uh, up by the dam, they're doing pretty well in crappie if you can find the schools. If you can't find the schools, if you don't have like that ability, that live scope, or uh, if you don't wanna go out there and sneak around behind the other fishermen in their boats to uh, you, you know um, see what they're catching, um, I would stick around the structures and things near South Fork. Now, um, live bait, right? You can get those live shiners down at Cope's Tackle here in Bakersfield. And usually those do really well. Um, I was up fishing one time uh, for some crappie and I, I, I was doing okay on some jigs. Uh, I was on a fly rod, but these guys in a float tube, they had some shiners and they were just fishing those about four or five feet under a bobber and they were just pulling them out left and right. So uh, give that a chance. Um, trout, okay, I've never really targeted trout. I'm not a troller, uh, but trolling is uh, your best bet right now. It's hot, trout are cold water fish. Uh, they're gonna be down deep. Uh, I was speaking to a guy uh, who did pretty well with lead core. He was 150 feet out from the back of his boat uh, and he was trolling um, like a needle fish. Other catching limits. And, uh, you know, that's not always easy to do in August. So we've been blessed with an excellent water year and, uh, you know, water's still coming down cold and, you know, those trout are still there and they're still able to be caught. All right, into the upper kern. So the upper kern is finally, finally. And when I say finally, I'm talking since like the middle of January, since it has been these type of flows. Uh, but we're looking at a right around 2000 CFS. The water is clear and I mean really clear. Uh, you know, there's a lot of light getting through. Uh, you can see a lot of that structure underneath, you know, those rocks, those pools of pocket water and all of that. Um, I mostly fly fish the upper Kern River, but I do a lot of other fishing as well. And I also talk to quite a few fishermen every single time that I'm out. So uh, the water temp is in the low 60s. Um, the higher that you go, right? So if you're starting right there in Kernville, right at the, you know, uh, the park right there in Kernville and you work your way up, up all the way up to, uh, you know, Johnsondale uh, Bridge, the water gets cooler the higher that you go. And I have this mic, I might have to change it. it keeps pulling my shirt down. And this isn't one of those videos, right? Anyway, the higher that you go, uh, the water gets cooler. So I suggest fishing those deeper runs. Um, I recommend, and this is my go-to when I'm up there and I'm fishing like with a spinning rod or something, uh, is just drifting eggs down those, those runs. Um, I'm not trying to hit the bottom. Uh, the water, you know, is moving fast. There's a lot of uh, volume of water and that usually leads, you know, gives you the tendency of, of getting, you know, hung up on the bottom and, and nobody wants to do that. So. I drift those through the runs and if I see they're getting out towards the riffles uh, or they're getting over towards the edge or something and I might get hung up, I just reel it in and I just start over. So uh, I got a good video. You can check these videos out up here and um, I will show you how to fish those salmon eggs in those runs. So check that out. Next best bet, and I know a lot of guys that this is their only bet, uh, is throwing rooster tails or throwing some sort of uh, even uh, trout imitation lure there, you know, works really well. A uh, guy caught a really nice brown just right up Johnsondale Bridge uh, not too long ago, and uh, there's been some pretty decent sized fish coming right out of behind McNally. So uh, they're there, uh, they are there, and they're hungry. Uh, they're probably not spooked from a lot of people fishing this year. Sorry, I had to take my mic off. I kept pulling my shirt down, it's driving me nuts. Um, anyway, right, so those runs, uh, the, the fish, they haven't been spooked. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of action in the water and uh, the river is nice and wide, so they can really hide out there in the middle. So as the water comes down, and I really see it coming down in the next month, uh, hopefully, hopefully we can get down around 1,000 CFS. Uh, that would be awesome by September and uh, fishing will be really turning on and it's gonna be getting a lot better. Now, I also wanna get into fly fishing because that is my preferred method of uh, hitting the upper kern. And uh, fly fishing right now should be getting a lot better. I see the river opening up here probably in the next month. Uh, the Tulare County Sheriff's Department has all those signs posted and it's actually uh, against the law right now to enter into the river, um, you know, for any type of recreation. Um, but I see that opening up. The water's gonna get back down to uh, kind of normal peak levels that we've seen in the past and the rivers remained open during those times. So I see that opening back up. 
Now, if you are out there and you're gonna be fly fishing, here's what I've seen either this year or uh, you know hatches that I've seen in the past. So we're gonna be looking at some pale morning duns, uh, some little brown stone flies, and we usually have a good caddis population out there. So uh, you can fish those types of patterns right now. I'm leaning mostly towards uh, emergers, uh, mainly because the water is moving fast, and as your line drifts, it tends to pull up and your flies come up in the water column. And if you're fishing an emerger, it looks like an emerging insect coming up to the top of that water. So um, that's what I am going to be fishing. Now, as the water starts to calm down a little bit and uh, we have the ability to get across the water and make those mends that we need to be making, uh, I will be switching over to some dry flies. Uh, you wanna tie on a dry dropper, go right ahead. We do have a lot of terrestrials and things that are out there. Um, a lot of grasshoppers, a lot of crickets, um, you know, that kind of stuff. Throw them on, be my guest. There's nothing wrong with using a cricket or a grasshopper, in my opinion, uh, as an indicator instead of throwing on, uh, you know, some other type of bobber that you might want to be using, right? And the emergers that I am fishing, most emergers, right, they're just thin body, uh, some sort of soft tackle or dubbing or something like that, uh, right? I really like to throw a hare's ear. Uh, the pheasant tails are good. Um, you know, but those are kind of where we're at. Now, uh, Frenchies, Pertagons, you'll see me fish those on my channel all the time, and they are great. They're, they're awesome. Now, um, as we get out there too, um, stoneflies always do pretty well. Uh, whenever we're looking at stoneflies, stoneflies, they have the tendency to look like, obviously, a stonefly, um, but they also look very much like a uh, you know, any other type of insect with legs. They look very cricket-like, they look very grasshopper-like, they look, you know, they, they have that characteristic of those other insects that fish are eating often. Um, blood worms, squirmy wormings, sand wands, they work and they work for a reason. Uh, blood worms are pretty common. I, I think there's like a rock worm out there or something that, that comes down in the creeks and things and the slower, slower moving water, but um, these fish, they've been flooded out all year, high water conditions, lots of rain, lots of snow melt, uh, and this is what they're eating, right? These red worms and things, they get washed down these creeks, they get washed through these watersheds, and these fish, they're picking them up, and that's what they're used to seeing, that's what they're used to eating. So they work, and they work for a reason. Uh, you know, most people fish those in high water conditions, and that is why. Um, another type of thing, uh, I can't remember if I've seen it on the Kern River. I, I want to say every once in a while you flip over a rock and you can see like a case, um, you know, a, a case type caddis. And uh, those case type caddises, um, you know, I have no shame. Like I said, I'll follow fishermen around and uh, talk to them and try to get their secrets. And uh, I have no shame in throwing something like a mop fly or some of those other, you know, band flies that nobody wants to talk about. Um, Right, I will throw salmon eggs on the end of my fly rod. So uh, yeah, come at me, bro. Um, you know, I have no shame. Uh, as we are also getting into uh, warmer weather, uh, we're finally starting to dry up. And uh, you know, this usually never lasts into August, which, you know, is freaking amazing uh, that we still have cold water coming down the mountains uh, right now. Um, we are looking at the creeks, right? So let's just, take a take a look at the creeks really quick our creeks they're, they're starting to slow down with the water slowing down it takes a little longer to get down the mountain so it heats up uh, the water is getting warmer in the creeks some of the creeks are drying up i did fish brush creek really hard um, and i uh, the lower part of brush creek is not fishing very well at all it's a great place to swim it's a great place to cool off um, but i think most of the fish in there got blown out uh, during our big uh, heavy runoffs and things. And so up top where the elevation change isn't as severe, I think the fish are still holding there and they're holding there pretty well. Um, but those creeks, whenever they have those big drastic changes, uh, I think those fish are missing. And, uh, you know, who knows, it's probably gonna take them until next spring before they can move back up into place uh, where they've held in the past. Let's get to the wild section. Okay, the wild section uh, is probably one of my favorite places to fish and mainly because you can go about a mile or two up into the wild section and then you don't see anybody anymore. Moving into the wild section, you can see the wild section is looking great. You can finally get back on the trail. That trail was covered for a little while. 
Um, you couldn't get any farther because the water was just too high. But we do have a new set of stairs now. So that whole shimmying down the rock and trying not to get caught, right? Nobody did that. Um, I, I didn't do it, uh, right? The stairs are great. The stairs are back and they're solid. And uh, so you can get out there and check that out. That pretty much wraps us up. Um, I will try to do these now that we are getting into prime fall fishing season and winter on the Kern River is usually pretty good as well um, and into the spring. So this is going to be a phenomenal year and I plan on putting these fishing reports. They should be coming out every month now. Just look for them at the beginning of the month, uh, that probably that first week uh, or so they should be coming out. Um, you can find all of my uh, past fishing reports either on my channel page. Uh, you know, you just click on Kern River Fishing Reports and it will show you all those. Uh, they're also in order on roadandreel.com. So those usually come out on roadandreel.com a little bit after the video comes out on YouTube. Uh, feel free to hit me up on Instagram. Give me a follow. Um, you know, if you have any questions, message me and uh, I can usually point you in the right direction. Um, reach out if you want some pointers, you want some tips. I'll uh, you know, tell you what to look for when you're on the river or, or in those locations and I'll usually tell you what uh, you need to be throwing at that time. So uh, I have no problem doing that. Uh, sorry, this was a really long fishing report. If you stuck with it the entire way, I am thankful this channel is growing and uh, I'm really thankful for all my subscribers. Um, I do want to say sorry to uh, the family that I photobombed yesterday while I was up on Johnsondale Bridge. Uh, they were down there just trying to take a family photo, but they got me in the background uh, doing this, uh, which I'm, I'm, I'm proud of, but sorry for photobombing you. If you watch this, uh, give it a like, right? <laughs> all right, everybody, uh, again, right? Hit the like button. Uh, if you haven't done so yet and you want to stay uh, you want to stay up to date with these fishing reports. You want to check out some of my fishing videos or my um, outdoor camping DIYs or truck, whatever I feel like working on. Um, check that out and, uh, you know, give me a subscribe. All right, everybody. I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.